This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. The culture of trade unions has always been very strong, holding the belief that social responsibility, quality education, and unions are tools to better society. So says President of the Bahamas Educators, Counselors, and Allied Workers Union, the BECAWU, Sandra Major, who told Rotarians on Thursday her union is prepared to fight. However, the preference is to work with the government in mutual respect and meaningful dialogue. Sometimes in this country when you do that, people will say to you that, you are playing politics. But you know, what we say is, this is democracy at its finest. Because now you have to make a choice. And whenever there is competition, people will always have to work harder. So we have decided the best way to get this done is to do it. There are many problems in education. Publicly insulting a minister and an oil director has not solved any of them. A new way had to be sought. A new approach had to be found. Bekawu is that way. The Grand Bahama-based BECAWU was officially formed in October 2020 and recognized in April of 2022. Before then, it was one voice speaking on behalf of all teachers. Mrs. Major says, though there are now two teachers unions, there is one employer and no matter how it's done, everyone will come from negotiations with the same benefits. However, she says BECAWU members are mostly representing teachers outside of the capital, wanting to speak for themselves. As a union, we have a fiduciary responsibility to protect the rights of our members and to negotiate for better terms and conditions for them. And to elevate the profession by having it remunerated properly. We also have a social responsibility to ensure that students have quality education and that they can achieve through partnership with parents, the ministry, and the Department of Education, who are stakeholders along with the teachers and the unions. Since becoming a union, we have met with the government on many occasions. We have been welcomed, and the welcome they have given has been very, very warm. We have decided to take a different approach. We know that sometimes things we don't always agree, but there is a way to do it in decency and in order. In May 2022, after recognizing the BECAWU as a second teacher's bargaining agent, the Bahamas Union of Teachers responded by filing legal action. Love 97 News reached out to BUT President Belinda Wilson for an update on the legal proceedings. She said the legal action is still going ahead. A number of high-level swearing-in ceremonies taking place this week with Governor General Sir Cornelius A. Smith administering the oaths to Mrs. Rionda Delaval gadette attorney at law, to be appointed to act as vice president of the Bahamas Industrial Tribunal. Mrs. Gadet was sworn in at the office of the Governor General on Thursday, September 1st. Also on Thursday, Governor General Sir Cornelius Smith administered the oaths to Ms. Simone Fitzcharles, vice president of the Industrial Tribunal, to be appointed to act as Chief or Justice of the Supreme Court. Chief Justice Ian Winder attended both ceremonies. The National Accreditation and Equivalency Council of the Bahamas, the NAECOB, hosted a ribbon cutting ceremony earlier this week to mark the opening of its new location on the corner of Tonic Williams Darling Highway and Knowles Drive. During her remarks, Glennis Hannah Martin, Minister of Education and Technical and Vocational Training, said it is essential that NAECOB is Un unquestioned, rather, in its credibility, precise in its execution, efficient in its operations, and responsive to all stakeholders, which ultimately are the Bahamian people. The agency was created in 2007 by the National Accreditation and Equivalency Council Act and is responsible for advising on the accreditation and recognition of educational and training institutions, providers, programs, and awards, in addition to the promotion of quality standards of education and training in the Bahamas. Mrs. Anne-Marie Davis, wife of Prime Minister Philip Davis also attending that event. And finally, several local businesses partnering together with a common purpose, and that is to assist those needing food assistance. Chef Emmanuel Gibson, owner of 
and proprietor of Manuelo's Restaurant says, with the rising cost of living, this is just one of his ways of giving back to the community by providing hot meals for students returning to school. Since the pandemic, there have been a lot of family members who are hurting, and also too with the inflation now, I think it's making it really difficult for a lot of family members to support their, their kids going back to school. So I've reached out to some partners, some very important partners, and I've discussed it with the minister, and I must say that she was very supportive of the idea. She was able to, you know, recommend the schools that she want me to, to start the program, and so I just want to publicly thank her for that, uh, for being so supportive, and certainly she have a heart for the students, and that's very important. And so the initiative started, and I got the ball rolling pretty quickly. I made some calls, and persons were, you know, excited to be a part of it, and so like I said, with the inflation and the pandemic, so we just want to make an impact in our community. And so the whole idea behind it, once again, is we're going to just do a breakfast exercise where we start at 7 a.m. and we're going to go until 8.30 in the morning. Beginning on Monday, September 4th, Chef Gibson says the goal is to provide five to 600 breakfasts per day, starting with primary schools across the capital. Talking with the minister, she's given me a list based on, you know, the, the, um, based on the demographics and stuff like that, where she feel like a program like this will be effective. And so we're taking her advice and her, you know, her feedback on that. All right, so we're going to start, like I said, on Monday, and we're going to start with Sandlin's Primary. And like I said, the time for that will be 7 a.m. to 8.30. Then we're going to take a break, and then we're going to go into Wednesday. We're going to go E.P. Roberts Primary School, same time again, 7 a.m. to 8.30. Then on Friday, we're going to go to Columbus Primary, 7 a.m., 8.30. So that's end of the week one. And then week two, we're going to go into Woodcock Primary School, 7 a.m. to 8.30. Then we go to Umaira Murphy School, 7 a.m. to 8.30. And then also C.W. Sawyer School. So same time. Bahama Striping Group of Companies, no stranger to giving back, just recently with Chef Emmanuel, did a similar initiative with nurses. Vice President of Operations, Frederica Sturp, expressing why Bahama Striping decided to partner with Manuelos. This is extremely important. This is actually crucial for corporate Bahamas to be able to team up to tackle ventures like this. Um, the need is ever-present. So anytime we could, however we could, it is very important for us to liaise um, be it a small venture or a large venture, it is extremely important. Students will be treated to a hot breakfast inclusive of hot tuna and grits, sausage and grits, tuna and egg sandwiches, along with a side of fruit and vegetables as well. Vegetarian options are also available. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jorino Saunders. Thanks for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.